there was a magician by the name of David Blaine. And David Blaine was buried alive for seven days in New York City. With only inches of wiggle room, he was buried beneath a three-ton water-filled tank. He had no food, drank only a few small sips of water each day during his stunt. I don't, I don't think I would have been able to do that. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He spent the week lying on his back as people came by and the media looked on. And at the end of the week, they brought him out of the ground. And people were astounded at the feat that David Bland had, had, had taken part in. A man had been buried alive. Seven days. We don't spend much time thinking about people being buried alive. Mm -hmm. But there are more people being buried alive today than one might think. There are even people being buried alive in Christian churches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody got me that gave me that look. Where you going, Pastor? <laughs> <laughs> in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 says. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So God made everything in six days and then carved a special day from out of the rock of time and rested, not because he was tired. God created, and then he rejoiced in what he had made, my friends, Enjoying the beauty of the world and spending time with Adam and Eve. That special day was a memorial of God's creative power. He marked his completion work of creation by resting. Not that he was tired, but he rested from his work. Now, Jesus alluded to the phenomenon in the last word. He spoke to his disciples, Matthew 28 and 19 and 20. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, he said, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. The subject of baptism must be pretty important to Jesus. If Jesus thought to discuss it with his disciples in one of the very last conversations that he had with them, it must be important. In the New Testament, baptism is mentioned multiple times, multiple times, and yet there's a great deal of confusion on the subject called baptism. People have different ideas about God's baptism. Matter of fact, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, the Bible says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. That is, one method of baptism. Yet we both know that some people are baptized by sprinkling. Sprinkle a little water on the heat. There's a, there's, a, there's a whole church that does that. They sprinkle a little water over the head of the person. Uh, and, and others by pouring, others by emerging, some by having oil placed on his forehead. I even heard, my friend, of a person who was baptized in a bathtub to the rose petals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A church in Charlotte, North Carolina, had people gathered in the parking lot of the church. And you know what they did? They called in the fire department. Huh? And, and the fire department took out their hoses and they sprayed the people with water and the preacher said, you baptized now. Right. Because they got some water on them. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure that's the biblical way. Huh? You might think, why does it even matter? Well, we're studying Bible prophecy. Does prophecy have anything to do with baptism, you might say? Well, 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 the book of Revelation culminates with people being with God forever in an earth made new. That's why we study the Bible. That's why we want to know more about
about Jesus because we want to be with God in a heaven made new. Ain't that right? And if you're with God in a heaven made new, guess what you're going to be described as? You're going to be a saint. Anybody want to be a saint out there? Amen. <laughs> Amen. In the age of spiritual confusion, God is calling people to surrender fully to him. Ain't that right? And we'll see tonight, my friend, that baptism plays a significant part in that, and we're going to see it right in the Bible. All right, well, well, well. Jesus' example is demonstrated in Matthew chapter 3. Watch <coughs> this, watch this. Then Jesus came from Galilee to join at the Jordan to be baptized by him. Mm -hmm. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? Is that what the Bible just said? Huh? Well, 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 let's keep on looking. And Jesus answered and said to him, Permitted to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. We had been baptized, John baptized him, and when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately out of the water. What did Jesus do? He came up immediately out of the water. Now, if Jesus came up out of the water, then that means he had to be where? Under the water. <laughs> Jesus came up out of the water, and behold, the Bible tells us that heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighted on him, and suddenly the Bible says, This is my son. This is God talking now. This is my beloved son, and who I am well pleased. Jesus got baptized. He went up under the water and he came up out of the water. Somebody need to say amen out there. Amen. This tells us something about baptism. When Jesus was baptized, his heavenly father contained the joy. And he thundered from heaven saying, I'm well pleased, that's what the Bible said. Now Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River and I read that the Jordan River was about 150 miles long flow to the Dead Sea. That's a long flow. And it formed in parts of the border between Israel and Jordan. Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River because John the Baptist was what? Baptizing there. Why was he baptizing there in the first place? Hmm? Well, Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 23. John chapter 3, verse 23. That John the Baptist baptized there because there was much water there. Huh? He was baptizing there for there was much water there. Now, if he could get away with just sprinkling a few drops of water on a person, he could have continued baptizing in the desert. But, 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 but John knew what God preferred method of baptism was, and he followed the will of God. He didn't take a bottle of water out to the desert and take some, and as they come, he sprinkled a little bit on their head. No, he knew exactly what God wanted him to do. So he brought him to the Jordan River, and he baptized him there. Why? Because there was much water there. Now let's press on and see what another example of the Bible baptism. In Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, verse 35. Acts chapter 8, verse 35. We find Philip the deacon, who is led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness, where he intersected with an Ethiopian man who was an official in the government of Queen Caius. The Bible says that this fellow had been reading from the book of Isaiah when he got in touch with him. Then Philip, the Bible says, opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they came on their way, there came a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. What hinders me to be baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. He answered and said, I believe. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Philip saw you that he needed to be baptized. 
went down both into the water. Both Philip and the eunuch, and he said, Philip, baptize this man from Ethiopia. And they would come up out of the water. The spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. That the eunuch saw him no more. But guess what? He went on his way rejoicing. Because he had participated in a biblical baptism that Jesus Christ himself had authorized. The Bible said he went on his way rejoicing. Amen. Now, remember when Jesus was baptized, his father's voice rejoiced. When the man from Ethiopia was baptized, he rejoiced. The father rejoiced when Jesus was baptized. The man rejoiced when he was baptized. We can see then that following Jesus' example in baptism is something that's going to give you joy. Amen. See, when, you, when, you, when you're baptized, you don't come up soul and all. Well, I just got to be baptized. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That can be some rejoicing that's taking place. You can only be glad, my friend, when God's will is being done in your life, this man from Ethiopia was baptized in immersion. And when he got up, he was happy. Amen. See, if you really got Jesus in you, and you said you believe what God is saying, you don't go down a, a dry devil and come up a wet devil. Uh-uh. You don't go down a dry devil and come up a wet devil. You come up with joy because you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son. Amen. amen, amen. So the word baptize comes from the Greek word baptizo, which means to immerse or plunge under water. Now, if you're going to die, some claws, you will baptize the claws and die. Ain't that right? You put die in a container. You push the cloth all the way under the dye and let the cloth soak up the dye. And every fiber of that, of that rope, that, that, that cloth or whatever, it changes to the color that you wanted to change to. Yeah. Amen. You know, I, 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 I used to think about uh, dyeing my hair, but I ain't have none, so I can't dye my particles, so I just leave that alone. Mm -hmm. In baptism, we are nursed that water washes over you and every time of your being takes on a, a new who baptized can only mean immersed, completely submerged under the water. Look what the Bible tells us. In addition to his example, Jesus taught about this just specifically in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, Jesus said, he who believes, huh? Look at it, look at it now. He who believes and is baptized will be what? Saved. Saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. In other words, we see two important points there. There's an inward belief and there's an outward demonstration. Maybe I should say that again. Uh, there's an inward belief. And there's an outward demonstration. You believe and you demonstrate. Uh, the outward demonstration is a sign, my friend, of a change that has taken place in your life. That's an outward demonstration. In the expectation of Christ, my friend, baptism was extremely, extremely important. Bible baptism is an opportunity for us to declare who we are on. Amen. We need to be washed clean. Ain't that right? Amen. And in the waters of baptism, then we make a public statement about our loyalty to our Lord God Almighty when we are baptized. Of course, Jesus was not baptized because of his sin. Amen. Ain't that right? Jesus was baptized, my friends, to identify with sinful humanity. Mm -hmm. And also to give us an example so that we will follow in his step. So in baptism, a person is buried under water. But what about this idea of people being buried alive? Colossians 
chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. It says, if we are buried, are immersed with him in baptism, you don't bury somebody unless they're dead. Mm. <laughs> Is that right? We will be hired by this the thought of somebody being buried alive. Yet people are being buried alive in baptism every day. is designed to follow the death that takes place when a person dies to the old way of life. When they die to the old way of life, when they die to self, and they die to sin. You don't do what you used to do no more. Huh? Oh, you might have did a little cussing. You don't cuss no more. Baptism, my friend, indicates that Jesus has made you new. You're a new person now. You're a new creature. You're no longer the same foul-mouthed person you used to be, but you're a new person. Amen. It's a time of celebration when you announce to the world that you're no longer the person you were because you found hope. You found hope. You found new life in who? Jesus Christ, my friend. Amen. So, experience we have with God isn't like what you see on a home improvement show, my friend. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't give you a new roof, replace some old boards, and give you a fresh coat of paint. Jesus brings in the demolition crew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he makes you up from the ground floor and up. When Jesus comes into your life, the old you is gone and a new you comes into being. You're no longer that old self you used to be. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Uh, do you not know that as many of us <coughs> as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. This is why baptism, my friends, by emerging is so important because it represents a death to the old life and a resurrection to a new life in Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, you come out of the water and say, the old me is dead, and I've been freed from sin. God is at work in my life, and I have given myself to him. I'm no longer the same person I used to be. I'm a new creature now. I know what the Bible tells me. I understand what the Bible tells me. And because I understand, because the Holy Spirit has washed me anew, I will be obedient to whatever God tells me in his word. Somebody needs to say amen. amen. You come out of the water, say the old me is dead now. God is at work in my life. I've given myself to him. In Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Romans chapter 6, verse 11, the Bible says, Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed into sin, but alive unto God through Jesus our Lord. Baptism is simply a grave between the old life of sin and the new life in Jesus Christ. Hmm. Ain't that beautiful? <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's keep going. In baptism, your sins are buried. Your sins are forgotten by God. Now that's good news, ain't it? Yeah. You bear it. Your sins are forgotten by God. You're given a new starting point. God allows you to start all over again with Him with a clean state, a clean shed. You're a new person now. You're a new creature. That old person you were is now under the guidance of Jesus Christ. It's good to let that old be under the guidance of Jesus. You have chosen not to serve sin any longer. You've given your heart to Jesus. You've given your all to Jesus. And you said, I am a new creature now. I'm not what I used to be. Amen. I may look like I used to be, but I'm not like I used to be. Amen. 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 You can say with Paul who wrote to the Galatians, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lived in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gives himself to me in baptism, my 
friend, you receive a new direction, a new freedom, a new spiritual power when you go down yeah. in the water. When you give yourself to Jesus, when you say, not me, but my Lord, that's who I give my life to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Bible is so clear on this subject. How did all these different methods come into Christianity? Well, until about the 13th century, the Christian, ch Christian church baptized by immersion exclusively. Until about the 13th century. Mm -hmm. You can go and look at the old cathedrals around the world. And churches that practice infant baptism today, you'll see that they once baptized by immersion in fact, even at the Leaning Tower of Pisa, there's a lot of baptistry where people were once baptized by immersion. You can see it today. Cardinal Gibbons wrote this in the book of Faith of Our Fathers. For seven centuries after the establishment of Christianity, baptism was usually conferred by immersion. But since the 12th century, the practice of baptism by infusion has prevailed in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And this matter is attended with less inconvenience than baptism by immersion. The church changed its practice because immersion wasn't convenient. Mm -hmm. Since it wasn't convenient, it should bring me that judgment. Bring me that water. Let me, let me baptize this person. Pop! <laughs> <laughs> In addition to that, my friend, there is a teaching that children were born guilty of sin because of Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden. And in a day when a lot of babies died, the teaching was that a baby who died without being baptized would go to hell <clears throat> because of heaven. Because it hadn't had that original sin washed away. They said the baby went to hell. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible teaches that a child is not guilty of the sins of the parent to suggest otherwise is crazy. <laughs> so why should a person, what should, what should a person do before being baptized? Right. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 says, repent. And be baptized. Before baptism, repentance ought to take place. Mm -hmm. We turn away from sin and we turn toward Jesus. Mm -hmm. Should I let me repeat that? Mm -hmm. Before baptism, repentance takes place. We turn away from sin and turn toward Jesus. It is necessary to believe. Jesus invited people to believe on him as the Son of God. Do you believe on him as the Son of God? Yes, yes. Hmm? Amen. Do you believe he's the Son of God? Yes. Amen, amen. And then in Matthew chapter 20, Matthew chapter 20, the Bible says, Go ye therefore and teach, or make disciples, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's important, my friend, to learn what it means to be a Christian. One reason too many marriages fail over is that the people getting into marriages don't learn what's involved in marriages. Mm. One of the reasons too many people fall out of the church is they don't learn what's involved in having a relationship with so the Bible teaches us to repent, mm -hmm. to believe, to learn. In fact, we can take that part and say it's important to be a disciple of Jesus before you are baptized. Are you a disciple of Jesus? It's important. It's important to be his disciple before you are baptized. Now let me ask you a question. Can a baby do these things? The obvious answer is no, which is why babies aren't baptized. Mm -hmm. Jesus wasn't baptized as a baby. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Instead, his parents brought him to the temple and dedicated him to God, and that's the right thing to do with our children today, to dedicate them to God, dedicate them to God, and dedicate ourselves to raising our children to know and love God. Someone want to ask this question. How old 
should children be when they're baptized. Mm -hmm. Now, there are no hard and bad biblical answers to that. Someone once said, if your child is old enough to be lost, then maybe the child is old enough to be saved. Mm -hmm. There's no exact age for baptism. That, that special experience with Jesus can vary from age to age. You've got some kids that are, ooh, boy, they even know they're into Jesus. But I do know one thing. If a child does not accept Jesus Christ before they get 13 or 14 years old, they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. The hormones start really going around about that time, don't they? <laughs> One night, Jesus was speaking to a man named Nicodemus and said to him, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born again means being born from above, born through the operation of the Holy Spirit of God. Let's see if you read the story, you know what Nicodemus replied by saying, how can a man be born when he's old? You know, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb uh, and be born? Now, Nicodemus was a wise man. Nicodemus knew better than that. The Jews considered somebody who converted to Judaism as being born again. They already knew that. But Nicodemus tried to be funny. Can I go back to my mama womb? Jesus said, I say to you, except a man be born of water, that's baptism, and the spirit, that's conversion, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Born, born of water, you come to Jesus in baptism. Born of the spirit, you receive the Holy Spirit at baptism, my friend, and the gift given to you by God. Well, 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 let's look at the scripture here. Remember Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, the Bible says, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. First day, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's one reason when I baptize these days. Once I bring them up, up, under, up under the water and they come back up, I stop and I put my hands over the head and I say, now be ye filled mm -hmm. with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. To be born of the Spirit means you have given your life to Jesus. You're experiencing the guiding and the government of the Holy Spirit in your life. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Hmm? You see, my friends, the grace of Jesus brings power to your life. When you got the grace of Jesus, you got power. It brings power into your life. When you come to Christ, there's power in your life. When Jesus enters your life, you're infused with heaven's power to make a new creature out of you. Do you sometimes you don't understand how come you're so goody goody now? Mm -hmm. That's because Christ has infused you with the power of his Holy Spirit. You came back from being good and nice and kind. Oh, I'm so, I, I love the Holy Spirit. I believe my, my brothers and sisters that God had been given, had given me the Holy Spirit. I always remember my mama used to tell me, boy, you ain't, you ain't gonna live to be 18. Mm -hmm. Cause I had to give my life to him. I'm so glad I gave it. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. There is a simple word, my friends, that can make a significant difference in our experience with God, and that's the word surrender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, God invites us to surrender to him. In the military, if you surrender, you run up the white flag. When you run that white flag up, you're saying, we ain't fighting any longer. I was watching a boxing match the other day, and the guys were fighting, there was a guy from Russia, and there's another guy from Britain, they was, they were giving it to each other, boy. Oh, that's about eight rounds where they were giving it to each other. And all of a sudden, the, the, the one guy took a white handkerchief and threw it in the ring. No more. And for a minute, the, the guy was looking at him like he didn't want to stop him. But I was reading a little story about a day after. He said, he, he said man, I'm so glad they stopped that fight. 
I could have ended up blind. Mm. Because the, his, his eye was messed up. They call it the orbit or something. With the eye was messed up. And he was so glad that his corner decided to throw in the white flag and surrender. We're not fighting in the moment, he said. We surrender. Too many people, even in church, are fighting God. Amen. They don't know how to surrender. They want things to go their own way and not God's way. They need to learn how to surrender. God says, this is the way. Walk ye in it. But too often, my friend, we say, I don't want to go your way, God. <laughs> Jesus said, you can surrender your life to me and I'll bless you. God's power and presence, my friend, can flood our life. He can strengthen us by his grace. Our faith, my friend, can be strengthened in Jesus. We can resist temptation by Jesus' power. Whenever we make God's presence, in our life, he can make us new. Mm -hmm. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 says, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You have the assurance that your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is given to you. You are adopted into God's family. Whatever the circumstance you were born into, faith in God means you are a child of God. Mm -hmm. You might be marginalized. You might be oppressed. You can be neglected and rejected, but when you put on Christ, you are right. You're not no little peasant. You're right. You're a part of God's family, and that ought to mean something to us. When you're baptized, you put on Christ. Mm -hmm. So should a person ever be rebaptized? Baptized more than once? Let's look at Acts chapter 19. You see, Paul finds himself in Ephesus interacting with certain disciples, followers of God. He said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They replied by telling him they had never even heard of such a thing. Huh? And that they had been baptized with John's baptism. Watch this. Here we go. Paul answered by saying that John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying that the people should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. In Acts chapter 19, verse 5, it says, when they heard this, what did it say in the scripture? They were what? in the name of the Lord Jesus when they heard this. They were baptized in the name of Jesus. They were baptized again. This time, my friends, accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, John baptized them to repentance. But now they were baptized as disciples of Jesus Christ. They knew whom they were following. It was a significant new life, and so they were rebaptized. When you get new life, yes, Lord. you can be rebaptized. Yes. If you have been following something that you didn't know about, perhaps you might have been cussing. Hmm? Perhaps you might have been doing things you didn't want to be doing. But when you get new life, when you know what God wants your life to be like, then you can be Suddenly, like I said, you learn great new knowledge. You might choose to be baptized as you embrace this significant new experience. If you have departed from God uh, yeah. and fallen away from your faith in Christ, it might be appropriate for you to be rebaptized. It might be time to say to God, I've started all over again. Here's what it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 41. The day that glad to receive his word were what? Baptized. They who, were, who gladly received his word were baptized. That's what the Bible tells us. And I don't know about 
about you, but I want to do what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. 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 We enter, my friends, in a sacred relationship with Jesus when we are sealed with him in baptism. Paul talked about the washing of regeneration, and that's what baptism is all about. It's dying to the old way of life. You no longer the same creature anymore. Bearing our sins in a watery grave. It's rising up again, walking in newness of life. If the devil ever comes knocking on my door again, I can point back to that day, my friend. I was baptized and said, I know of a truth that I am a child of God. I've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Sometimes the devil wins when he comes knocking. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the truth. That's, 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 that's the truth be told. You, can, you, you might have been walking for years as a Christian, and then something happened, and you lose it. The devil came knocking, and you were trying, but I'm so glad there's something called repentance. I'm so glad that there's something called surrender. And I can come back because as long as you got breath, you can come back. I wouldn't take no chance. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The old me was buried, and Jesus lifted a new me out of the water. Baptism, my friend, is a sign to the church and to the world that you have accepted Jesus Christ. You made a full surrender, and you've chosen to follow him. Amen. That's what it is, my friend. There was a man in the Bible named Naaman. You know he was a leper. Remember him? The prophet of God told him to immerse himself seven times in the Jordan River. After some complaining. You know, can you imagine? Somebody say you're gonna get your leprosy healed. And you complain. He was complaining. He eventually agreed to do it, but before he agreed to do it, he was complaining. I ain't going to let it muddy water. <laughs> Into the water he went, and under the water he went once. He probably went down that first time and said, I ain't doing hell. <clears throat> Twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. And when he came out of the water the seventh time, the leprosy was gone. God had made him clean. Amen. God can make us clean. Amen. Hey, man, he can clean us up. Just as he cleaned up that up the, up the ladder, he can clean us up. He can clean us up, my brothers and sisters. In the Bible, leprosy, my friend, is used sometimes as a symbol to represent sin. Mm -hmm. If you have sinned, God says, I invite you. Go down to the waters of baptism and come up with the assurance that you are clean. But God has made you new. God knows you. See, my friends, we need to have that turning point when we demonstrate that we have been changed inside and become a child of God. We need to have that turning point, my friend. Saul was on his way to Damascus. You remember that? When Jesus appeared to him in a bright light, Saul had been persecuting God's people, but thank God he doesn't just look at how you act. Instead, my friend, God sees how you can be through Jesus. You might be the worst person you ever thought you were. But when God get a hold of him, he see through you. He can see the greatness, the goodness in him, in you, that he's given you. Instead of noticing only when you've been, he sees where you can go if you get connected to Christ. Paul was told God had handpicked him and called him to be his man. Don't you want God to handpick you? Amen. <laughs> hey, hey, God said to Saul, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. God might say the same thing to us tonight, my friend. Why are you waiting? It might be the time that we arise and say, Lord, I want to be baptized. Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. Oscar was 95 years old and he was an atheist. His Christian wife had prayed for him for years. 
Late one night, he had a dream that Jesus was coming back and was calling to him. He didn't he dismissed the dream. It couldn't mean anything. He convinced himself it was just a dream. A couple of weeks later, he had the same dream. And started to think there just might be a God who loved him and cared about him. He started to attend church with his wife. And then at the age
to rededicate our lives and then accept this call to bury all and let be forgotten by God. Thank you. You want me to give you one first?